Hello again there YouTube. Uh, just thought it was about time for an update video for you guys. Uh, it's uh, been just over a year now since the solar shed was first put together. A um, couple of minor updates, uh, nothing too major. Um, first main one is the wire there that used to just be the sol big solar panel running down to the shed. Uh, we've now got a second wire running along that, which is a house mains power wire, um, which is basically plugged into the garage uh, and going down the shed. Now, originally that was going to be for running uh, heaters and that in the shed, but also for plugging in a grid tie inverter so when we've got excess power, uh, we can run it back up to the house. Um, now we may still do that, um, at the moment it is literally just being used for a heater or in, in December and January when we were running out of power in the shed, uh, we were switching to mains because uh, the 100 watt system just wasn't giving enough uh, um, for what we needed. Um, another addition is this uh, little 150 watt light up here, uh, that's coming straight off of the uh, inverter on the batteries, uh, set that to come on in the night just for a couple of hours just with the sensor. Um, we had a couple of issues with that in de January and December. Uh, again, you know, it's 150 watts, but it only comes on very briefly, but even that, the soul just wasn't put up with it. Um, it's now March, still pretty cold, but we're starting to get enough sun that it's kind of running itself again now. So I'll just take you inside. I see my hand shaking how cold it is. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, only a couple of minor changes in here. Um, we now have the outside light, which uh, is running on a timer. Uh, and again, all of this stuff here is the same solar powered connections as before. The main difference is we now have this orange socket here which goes straight up to the garage mains powered wiring um, and at the moment this is running a heater uh, the one down here because it's bloody freezing uh, and then just a little extension just for a couple of things if we ever need to plug them in over there um, did a bit of experimenting with the light uh, and kind of found that uh, at least in January and December unless I kind of really limited this uh, at the moment it's limited to four hours a day and that's on a sensor as well it was just absolutely killing the battery um, so that's now on a timer um, now we're in March, it's it's starting to work okay but certainly January, December you know we just were not getting enough sun to make it viable it just wasn't working uh, other than that just the other day I popped in a spare little mini fridge I've got here uh, can run on 12 volt all mains um, I've currently got it running through the mains inverter, so maybe not quite as efficient, but if I track down the 12 volt wire, I'll go ahead and just plug it in direct then. But that's just, you know, if we want to chill some drinks now when the warm weather eventually gets here. Uh, right now it's still freezing. Um, I'll show you some stats on the meter. Uh, I only reset this the other day. Well, I reset it about maybe two weeks ago. You'll see there that the voltage got very, very low. Um, one thing I found, and I know it's bad for the batteries, but there's not much I can do about it, is that uh, when it when the batteries get too low, the charge controller cuts out, and the grid uh, the inverter also cuts out. But when it cuts out, it sets off an alarm, and it just keeps on going until you come down to the shed and reset it. So, you know, if you leave it for a few days and you haven't gone down the shed you know, it'll just absolutely kill the battery. Um, I mean, we've done our best now just to keep an eye on it because, you know, going by this chart, you know, anything below about 11.3, you know, you're doing serious damage. So, <laughs> you know, 7 volts on the lowest is, well, not good. Um, got the drill here, just hooks it up on the solar, just keep it charged when, as and when I want to. Uh, and now at the moment, uh, my dad's got this uh, propagator thingy uh, just for growing his plants. Uh, it's 20 watts 
heat up we're doing at the moment just until we get into the more summery months is during the day when there's a bit of good done it's uh, plugged in straight on the solar powered mains so going through the inverter and then in the night just to save wasting the batteries too much it's plugging into this which is going straight to the house so at the moment in the day this runs off the solar in the night it runs off the house grid uh, and pretty much that's the only changes so far um, pretty much not going to be doing much else with the solar shed in the near future um, what we've decided is we're going to start a slightly separate project we're going to get um, probably a 150 watt panel uh, separate to the shed uh, and just up there where the shed one is we're going to have the second panel um, but instead of coming to the shed that's just going to go straight into the garage uh, and then straight to a grid tied inverter and into the house uh, so that's going to be a separate system um, I mean the, the grid tied inverters are pretty cheap now so I probably will still go with my plan of buying one for the shed anyway because um, last summer we had excess power and we'll probably have excess power again this summer so I'll just I'll still fit one here with a little switch to switch it between the solar going to the batteries or the solar going to the grid tie and then it'll you know the grid tie will be there and it'll literally go into this orange socket which basically leads up into the garage and house wiring uh, only other thing to add um, especially with the low voltages we've been having especially in winter um, is we will be getting a hold of another big deep cycle uh, I can't remember off the top of my head what the capacity on this is uh, I know it's pretty big but I mean we've got space just to the side so chances are I'm just going to get another one of these pop it for there and then we'll have two massive batteries plus this one and I mean that should be enough uh, might consider adding a another panel to the shed itself in the future um, but we'll see how things go um, if I do that I'll have to change this controller uh, unfortunately this is only a 10 amp rated controller uh, which is effectively 120 watts worth of power um, now we're not getting that at the moment in the winter but I know in the summer we were peaking um, not that not far off that you know 100 watts worth of panels and we weren't too far off the 120 watt mark so uh, you know, I've, I've heard stories, if I try to add too much more power to this, um, these things will basically just melt. So, for now, all that's going to happen with the shed is bigger deep cycle battery, or a extra deep cycle battery. Uh, and then when we go and do the separate project, which is going to be panel for the garage, going straight into the grid with a grid tie, I'll probably just get two of them. I mean, if I, you know, if I can get a deal, I mean, I think they're about about seventy pound for a three hundred watt one. So I mean, if I can do a deal with the seller, get two of them for just over a hundred pounds, then I'll have one in the shed for when we do have excess power, and then one on the garage for the uh, the dedicated system. Um, beyond that, I've done a little project for myself. Um, I'll probably post up a separate video for that, to be honest. Um, but the long and short of it was I got um, a little 5 watt panel uh, that I was going to use on my van to just run the fan in it on hot days uh, to keep it ventilated uh, well it turned out that 5 watts is nowhere near enough uh, to run the van's internal fan it's more like 40-50 watts which is pretty crazy um, so that panel uh, I think it was a 5 watt panel only cost me £10 um, and it's just like these ones on the shed itself. It's all uh, it's all sealed metal frame. I mean, it's really well made for the price. Um, I'll, I'll show you guys a video next. Uh, pretty much what I've done with it. For, for ages, it was sitting in the garage. And I was wondering what to do with it. Um, I've got it up on the roof. You can't see it from here because it's only a tiny little thing. Um, and basically, I've got a wire. Which is, which is just uh, speaker wire, uh, running straight to my uh, bedroom. Uh, 
I mean, yeah, I know that's going to be losing a lot of power, but I'm not fussed. It's just a spare panel uh, going to my bedroom to charge a small 12 volt battery, which I'm using to charge my phone and stuff. And that's my dog. <laughs> Anyways, thanks, thanks for watching the video, and uh, as usual, any questions, let me know.